Good morning and welcome to Grain TV. For Good afternoon and welcome to Grain TV. Good afternoon welcome to Grain TV. Cody, what's your favorite number out of this morning's garage with data? Yeah, I, I'd say the Good morning and welcome to Grain TV for September 12th, 2011, USDA Supply and Demand and Production Report Day. To my left is Logan Burgess. I'm Brock Shimbido. Well, Logan, we've seen quite a bit of choppy trade in the last week or so. Continued in the overnight on Sunday night, we were down six and a half on corn. Soybeans were down two and a quarter, and wheat was down four. Uh, but we're looking for this morning for that to continue, actually, with corn being down five to ten on the opening call, soybean down ten to twenty, and wheat being down five to ten. Uh, but you know, today we're we're here to look at what the actual USDA production numbers were. What are you looking at over there for the numbers? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, you know, we had a pretty big report come out today, especially as corn's concerned. We actually saw corn uh, projected uh, yield downgraded five bushels per acre for the 2011 crop. Uh, analysts kind of had it pegged around this area, though. You know, the 148.7 level was kind of the level that we've been watching, and uh, you know, it came in right below there. So, uh, you know, a pretty big mover today for uh, for the corn market. Yeah, I'm looking at that very significant number. Revised five, almost five bushels an acre lower uh, by the USDA. Uh, they cited a couple reasons. Heat during pollination was one of the reasons. Dryness, uh, continued dryness through most of the corn belt for the most of August and into September now. Uh, so those are two of the biggest contributing factors to that lower number. Uh, analysts did have it pegged pretty close yeah. to that, so it's not going to be real shocking to the market at this point, uh, but it should move it, you know, slightly in the positive direction, I believe. Uh, but as far as soybeans, we saw a different story over there in soybeans. What's going on? Yeah, absolutely. You know, when we when we look at soybeans, um, we actually saw a, an increase in projected yield by the USDA by 0.4 bushels per acre coming into the 2011 crop. You know, and I think that that was a little bit of a surprise to some people. You know, what, what do you think was contributing to that uh, increase in yield there? Yeah, I think most of the analysts had us projected a little bit lower than what the USDA yep. did. They came out and surprised us, projected a little bit higher. Uh, I don't know if there's really a rhyme or reason other than, you know, we did get some some rain in some of those uh, yep. soybean areas uh, throughout the, the pod filling stage. Cooler temperatures also contributed to a, a better pod filling. Um, but, you know, the biggest thing moving both of those was on... Uh, the demand side, we'll take a look at that here in a little bit, but let's take a look at what ending stocks are projected to be next year. Yeah, as far as ending stocks is concerned for the 2000-2012 year, um, you know, we saw some interesting numbers come out here today. We saw corn, uh, their August projections were at 714 million bushels. We actually saw that downgraded to 672 million bushels, uh, million bushels, excuse me, that was a 42 million bushel shift. And uh, you know, I, I have to think that's only gonna only gonna add to the bullish sentiment that uh, we saw from the yield projections this morning. What what what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, most of that is due to lower production, uh, but we're also gonna see uh, you know some changes to the demand scenario. Uh, we see feed, ethanol, uh, a couple of these other uh, areas actually revised lower. Um, but you know, the beginning stocks coming in this year are also gonna be lower. Uh, that was projected down 20 million bushels. Uh, this year, uh, but on soybeans, we actually saw a slight uptick on the on the beginning stocks. Uh, what are we looking at there? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, again, we kind of see a different story here between uh, soybeans and corn. We see a 10 million bushel increase in uh, projected ending stocks for 2011, 2012. Uh, we moved from 155 million bushels uh, right up to 165 million bushels, and um, you know, uh, you know, not really the, as big of shift that we saw in the corn market there. But but, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, most of that is due to increase in production. Uh, we actually saw imports get projected higher as well. We'll take yeah. a look at those numbers here in a minute. Uh, but most of that is due to that increase in production uh, right. going forward. Uh, as far as wheat's concerned, they're probably going to have the biggest shock coming out of this ending stocks report. Uh, they're actually projected to have a change of about 90 million bushels uh, on their ending stocks higher. Uh, most of that is due to a high dollar that we've had recently. We've lost a lot of our exports to competition from the Black Sea area, Canada, Australia. Yep. Some of these places have really taken the, taken its toll on our exports right yeah. now. So I'm looking at that as the biggest driver for why their ending stocks are going to be bigger this next year. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's jump to a quick commercial break and we'll come back with On the Board. How does an extra 10 to 20 cents per bushel sound to you? Sounds pretty good to us as well. So how do you know where the best markets are? Your best selling opportunity changes on average six to eight times throughout the course of a year. At GeoGrain, we gather and analyze data from over 4,000 grain buyers every single day. We can guide you towards the optimal market. GeoGrain, global markets, local precision. Visit our website for a free personal... 
And welcome back. Uh, Brock, how about we go to the Fire Tip platform and see how the market's doing with this uh, new information here? Yeah, the market really is taking it as a grain of salt for, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for December absolutely. corn. We haven't changed at all, actually. Uh, the biggest driver so far is soybeans. They were actually down about 21 and three quarters, testing that support level in the four. 14 to 14 uh, 10 range. Yep. Uh, wheat is down pretty sharply, 10 and a half on Chicago and 20 on uh, Kansas City. Uh, you know, I'm looking at the biggest driver right now is an ensuing acreage battle that's going to yeah. be coming out of this report. Uh, looks like soybeans are really taking it on the chin right now. Uh, so we're going to see how corn keeps up with that if they're going to actually yeah. follow them lower. Absolutely. As we uh, well, looking at that chart there, do do you think that you know? Do you think that some of this uh, this this yield estimate that came out today? Do you think that this was partially built into the market? Do you think that? People were expecting this uh, this announcement. I think on corn they were fully expecting what was going on. We yep. did get it revised slightly lower, but as of like I was saying just a bit ago, uh, I think the acreage battle is what's going to be be, be going to be fought out right now. Yeah, and I think uh, soybeans are really taking it on the chin, so corn's got to kind of stay in lockstep with them right now. Right. Uh, but let's take it take a look at some of those numbers that actually did get revised. And as far as corn is concerned, I'm looking at uh, three big areas where they got revised lower. Feed use was revised 200 million bushels lower. Uh, ethanol use was 100 million bushels lower and exports were 100 million bushels lower. So that, that gives us our total of 400 million bushels lower on the usage side. Production was down 417 million bushels uh, and our ending stocks were down about 20 million bushels. Um, so I'm looking at that as you know a net net basically a zero change yeah. uh, but it does show that some of the demand is waning for our, our corn here in the United States. Uh, yep. You know the dollar index is not helping that uh, but we also have significantly very high prices right now yeah yeah uh, so i'm looking at those high prices have taken some demand out of the market um so uh, you know i look for that to continue if we keep these high prices yeah. what are we looking at for soybeans slogan well so, uh, as far as soybeans are concerned here we have uh beginning stocks has actually moved down five million bushels um you know the kind of the big number out of here i think was the uh we, we were up 29 million bushels on the production side of things and, uh, you know, ultimately, we actually see a little bit of an uptick in uh, projected usage here for the 2011-2012 uh, year, up 15 million bushels. Yeah, a lot of that usage is going to be going to exports, it looks like. Yeah. Uh, China came out last week, said they were going to uh, be purchasing more soybeans next year. A lot of those sales have been going to South America right now, but I look for that to start to shift to the United States. Yeah. Uh, so we, we're looking at exports being increased about 15 million bushels next year uh, over the August projections. Yeah. Uh, so those are the big numbers coming out of this report that were revised, but let's just take a look at the December technicals uh, on December corn to see where we're standing right now in the face of this report. Yeah, absolutely. You can kind of, I mean, you can kind of see here, we've been on a bit of a run here since uh, in the last month or so, you know, maybe even two months back and uh, it looks like we kind of peaked out. Um, 779 was actually our, our highest point. I'm yep. looking at that as being resistance right now. I kind of thought we were going to test that. Yeah. Uh, here today, but it doesn't look like the market's quite reacting the way I was anticipating. Uh, so it remains that 779 is going to be our highest resistance level. Support actually comes in at about 745. We broke through that last week. We're kind of trading in that range right now. Uh, but the next area of support is going to be 720, and then below that is going to be the $7 range. Yeah. And like we were saying earlier, on beans, we're right in that support area as we speak. Yeah. If we take a look at what's going on at fire tip. Uh, we're right above that $14 level that was resistance for such a long time. Yeah. And now it's actually turning to be very strong support. Uh, right there at $14.03 we're sitting in. We've been bouncing around back and forth for the last few minutes. As far as corn is concerned, we're at $7.35, only down a penny in the quarter right now. So yep. this this information was taking it, taking it to soybeans, taking it to wheat, but corn really hasn't moved a whole lot. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for joining us here on Grain TV. If you want to follow us on Twitter, uh, Facebook or visit our website at grainhedge.com. Uh, you can also get a hold of us via email at graintv at gmail.com or you can give us a call at 877-GRAIN07. Thanks for joining us and have a good one.